first introduced in quality insurance about 1965, and that was on the back of the USS Thresher, which was a submarine, a nuclear submarine that sunk uh, after it was in the shipyard undergoing repairs. And after it sunk, they went through an investigation to find out what exactly caused it. And the traceability and documentation pointed to this auxiliary saltwater system uh, that uh, caused the flooding that shut down all the electronics when the submarine went down. Now, my involvement was that was my mentors were actually quality assurance that knew about the rejections in the uh, soldering joints and the welded joints and things like that that were wavered at the time. Decisions were made by a band of people that didn't have the technical authority. My mentors were people who experienced 147 lives that were lost, which a lot of them were personal because they worked very close with the submariners on the ship. So my training was built on stand firm, quality assurance. If it doesn't meet the requirements, then you have to battle it to your death to make it happen. In the military, they did a few things that were different. Number one is they required any leaders uh, not just to take the leadership management, but to take two years of psychology. And the whole purpose of it was to make everyone uh, understand how important they were. In other words, if you was uh, working in a, a room with the uh, lead engineer and you was just a mechanic turning nuts and bolts, you had the same authority and responsibility to that job and that was my quality foundation. That's how we built things. And that's how uh, they, what they called the SubSafe program was specifically designed to make sure that that sub was safe. If you can conquer the human factor in an organization, then the company will be stable. If you can't conquer the human factor, in other words, people feel like they're individuals working in separate entities within your organization, it's not gonna happen.